let's talk now about healthcare fraud. Healthcare fraud involves various different aspects for False Claims Act cases. It could be fraudulent billing, it could be anti-kickback statute violations, it could be stark violations, it could be best price violations, or off-label marketing. Now, fraudulent billing violations. Fraudulent billing could comprise many different facets, one of which are treatment issues. It can involve total neglect of a patient, for example, worthless services, inadequate services, or involve the inappropriate standards of care. It can involve misrepresentation of one's credentials, upcoding or improper coding for goods or services, bundling or unbundling with regard to billing, or retention of overpayments and not paying back the government what is due and owing. The anti-kickback statute violations involve various different aspects. It's a very complicated statute. The anti-kickback statute, basically, what it does, it prohibits, for example, pharmaceutical manufacturers, physicians, and pharmacists from offering or receiving anything in value in return for the referral of patients or the ordering of any types of goods or services. Under the Affordable Care Act, any claim submitted for a service that resulted from a violation of the anti-kickback statute is now false for purposes of the False Claims Act. There are no heightened scienter requirements and before the Affordable Care Act, a violation of the anti-kickback statute was generally brought under the false certification theory. You don't have to do that anymore. It is absolutely per se a violation of the False Claims Act. Stark violations. Stark violations, which can be brought under the False Claims Act, are designed to prevent abusive self-referrals by physicians. Stark Act prohibits any physician from making a referral to a provider of what's called the designated health care service if the physician has a financial relationship with the provider. A violation of the Stark Act may lead to False Claims Act liability under the certification theory. There are multiple safe harbors that you have to look at to determine whether there's exceptions to the Stark violations as well as the Kickback Act. So just reading certain parts of the statute don't tell you everything. You have to read the entire statute, understand the statute with regard to the rules and the exceptions. Now refund obligations. There must be refunds reported to the government and must be refunded. It is strengthened by the Affordable Care Act. You must now refund within 60 days or on the next course report after discovery. Otherwise, you could be susceptible to violating the False Claims Act and susceptible to someone in the company you work at bringing a False Claims Act case. Best price Medicaid rebates. Best price is the lowest price at which a manufacturer sells drugs to a purchaser in the United States. It does not include merely nominal prices and does not include government purchasers. The bottom line is the government and government programs should and must get the best price affordable out there by the manufacturers and it must take into consideration what has been paid to commercial people and what has been paid to government people. And the bottom line is the government has to get the best price from the manufacturers. Now, drug manufacturers pay rebates to state Medicaid programs to ensure that the program receives the best price on covered drugs. False reporting of best price may lead to False Claims Act liability. The bottom line is whether the pharmaceuticals companies like it or not, they have to give the government the best price. Whether or not it's economically advantageous to them or not is irrelevant. They have to give the government the best price. Again, like the anti-kickback statute, like the Stark statute, best price has some exceptions to it, but you have to read the entire statute to understand the manufacturer's role and liability. Off-label marketing. Off-label marketing is the marketing of drugs for use not listed on a drug's FDA-approved labeling. 
So you need to look at the label first of a certain pharmaceutical product to determine what the label says about what the drug should be used for. The dissemination of information on off-label usages must meet certain requirements. If not, the drug is considered misbranded and not reimbursable by Medicaid. It may also hold the pharmaceutical company may be not only responsible for civil violations, but potentially criminal violations along these same lines. Reimbursement by Medicaid, with only one rare exception, is prohibited if the drug is not being used for a medically accepted indication. And a medically accepted indication is one that is approved under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, or its use is supported by an approved compendia. Again, like the other statutes and the other rules, it's very complex off-label marketing, and there are a lot of rules and exceptions and statutes that must be looked at to determine whether or not there is a False Claims Act violation.